What's going on guys, Sticks here with the Token Minorities bringing you the battle for week 10 of season 6 of the CPC up against Johnny Rise Pool and his Rhine Valley Guardians and before I get into the game, just a reminder that if you guys like this video or found it helpful, please leave a like, drop a comment, click that subscribe button, it helps us out a ton and let's do more cool stuff for you guys and if you have not done so already, please feel free to check out the TTM Discord that will be linked in the description. But anyway, on to the team. Like I said, we are up against Risepool and his Rhine Valley Guardians. And like I said, in the team builder, this is a meme match. Both of us are guaranteed the top two seeds in our division at this point, in our conference, sorry, at this point. So we're guaranteed playoffs, guaranteed top two seeds. So uh, we were like, well, do you want to just meme? And I mean, admittedly, whoever wins this game gets the best record in the CPC for the season. But neither of us really particularly cared about that so we're just like yeah let's meme let's have some fun with it and see what happens and for those of you that did not watch the team builder i highly encourage you to do so because some of these sets are really heat and i didn't get to show off as much of them as i would like it will be linked in the description but yeah it, for those of you that haven't seen it and don't know what sets are being brought i'm actually not going to I'm not, not going to tell you until we get into the game and you can see their beautifulness take over. So, uh, yeah, I mean, looking at his team is really not a whole lot to say because I have no idea what he's brought because this is a meme match. So let's just go ahead and jump right into it. He's going to lead with his Mammoth Swine as I lead with my Ferrothorn. Maybe I can, like, power up Ironhead something. And uh, even though I am max speed Scarf, I still don't outspeed Mammoth Swine, who is just able to get up a free Reflect. And yeah, this is a dual screen uh, lead Mammoth Swine with uh, looks like hazards or both screens, rocks and some form of attack. And then I do Iron Head. I'm bringing it very low. And at this point, I'm like, well, I don't want to give him the full turns of Reflect because he does have dual screens up. So, I mean, I'm still going to try to win this meme match. I'm not just going to play it like, OK, let's just leave him on in until it dies. I'm actually going to play it out, but the meme came in with the set. So I'm going to go into my Buzzwool knowing that he doesn't have, well, he only has one move to potentially hit the rest of my team. Buzzwool will be able to take whatever hit he wants to go for. And then I can just fire off a toxic against his team as no matter what he goes into, I will be able to hit that and even going for specs HP bug, even though that is specs and stab is going to do absolute jack. He goes into a Suicune, which is very nice for me. So I'm able to get a toxic off on that. And now I'm going to go into my Spadef Mega Pidgeot to attempt to try to set up on this thing. Maybe I can curse up and go from there but he reveals the tailwind and as you're going to see right here he goes for the ice beam so this is still a special Suicune under tailwind behind uh screens and I'm just like oh well um I get to it KO'd by the ice beam so even full spit F mega Pidgeot couldn't do crap and it just goes down to two ice beams so I was like huh well that is unfortunate right there and this Suicune is actually being very annoying he revealed johnny actually revealed that this was weakness policy tailwind suicune which is a very cool set but i'm going to go into my gengar right here knowing that i can revenge kill it uh will live any hit and then knock it out with a banded thunder punch as he does make the very good play goes into mammoth swine it's going to be able to get these screens back up so i'm just going to take this opportunity go into my incineroar he probably doesn't have uh, earthquake he probably has ice coverage so i will be able to come in and get up a nasty plot after I, after i intimidate him yes this does allow him to get up both screens once again uh, as I could have uh, gone for more nasty plots to stall out the screens a little bit more but I just said that one was sufficient for the time being I can just attack whatever comes in as I am able to knock him out with the dark pulse as he does reveal the eye shot he goes into Breloom missed the first fire blast not a huge deal as Incineroar actually does live the giga impact and I do get my Salak berry and this is amazing because if I can stall out the light screen a little bit longer Incineroar might be able to clean up the game but I miss a second Fire Blast is after he went for the Giga Impact, he has to recharge anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. I think that a plus two uh, Fire Blast, even with the light screen up, should be able to KO the Breloom, or at least that's what I'm hoping, as I actually end up missing three Fire Blasts in a row, and Incineroar goes down. So even though the set worked perfectly, it just missed three Fire Blasts in a row, and there's nothing I can do. So I bring in my Salamence, and I'm actually going to pause it right here. I was trying to just go through the battle without pausing, but right here, it's... Uh, so this Salamence, for those of you that didn't watch the Team Builder, is one of the best sets to ever grace the game. And with the Breloom having to recharge, I'll be able to come in, Intimidate. I had to switch uh, Intimidate Moxie. I had to switch Moxie to Intimidate just because this Salamence uh, with 
a move that it has and Moxie was not compatible, so I had to switch up. I had to switch up the abilities, which actually really comes in handy right here, as I will be able to come in on the Breloom as it recharges, and I'm just able to get up a free a free substitute in front of this Breloom, and now I'm able to defense curl. As you guys already know what's happening, he's going to Giga Impact does not break my sub thanks to the Intimidate and the defense boost, and now. My Salamence is going to be able to start rolling out on his team. Breloom takes a decent amount, but it's slowly, it's slowly building back up. It's slowly building up. I'm going to be able to, ta uh, to take out this Breloom eventually, build up the rollouts, increase the damage with my, uh, increase the damage with Metronome and Rollout. And yeah, thanks to Defense Curl, Metronome and Rollout, Salamence is going to be destroying something, able to break that substitute very easily. He will be able to break my sub with Focus Punch, but at this point, something is dying. And if this is a bulky Archeops, my Salamence very well might just win the game. He goes into Landorus, gets the Intimidate, and just drops. Landorus just straight up drops to a Rollout. Keep in mind, I don't have any attack boosts. He intimidated me, so I am at minus one attack right now. And this using a non-stab move, Landorus just dropped to that rollout. So what, I think I was at the fourth rollout stage at that point. So, I mean, this, <laughs> that was incredible. Like he sent in Landorus, I was like, okay, I'll two hit KO this thing, that's fine. Nope, Landorus comes in, puts me at minus one, and still just straight up drops to a rollout. Like, I don't care how the match goes at this point. This was the most satisfying moment I've ever had, probably in Pokemon. I mean, Landorus straight up dropping to a rollout on the Switch from a non-rock type was amazing. So big shout outs to my front office for that set. I mean, that was, oh my gosh, that was amazing. I, I can't even describe how amazing that was. <laughs> But he goes into a Suicune, and now with the fifth uh, stage of rollout, I am able to one-shot that thing or clean it up from there. He goes into Archeops, and if this thing is slow, with Metronome, I should be able to kill it. But it is uh, fast, which, I mean, makes sense. Is able to head smash, knock me out. But now I am able to go into my Ferrothorn and just proceed to Iron Head something. I mean, Offensive Ferrothorn actually will be doing uh, decently at this point. So Breloom comes in with the Poison Heal. It's not going to quite be a two-hit KO. But at least, at, uh, but at the very least, he can't hit me with any fighting move. Uh, he goes for the focus punch. I'm just staying in, going for Iron Head. I know his set. I know he doesn't have fighting coverage, so I'm just staying in uh, with my Ferrothorn. And yeah, Ferrothorn didn't even outspeed a Breloom. My choice scarfed Jolly Ferrothorn did not even outspeed Breloom. So uh, yeah, that was just kind of a huh. Maybe I should have just put like choice band or something on this. But Munchlax comes in. Um, I'm going to go straight into my Gengar, just trying to see what he want, wants to be. And he's a curse Munchlax. So I'm like, ah, crap. Well, my Gengar walls, but he walls me too. So I'm just going to go into my Buzzwool. And what's funny is the lack of move, uh, special moves on Buzzwool is really going to help me in this instance. Because, okay, first of all, look at this. He paralyzes me and I'm still faster. Uh, but the fact that I have to run Endeavor because I didn't have special moves is going to allow me to actually beat this Munchlax, which I not would which I would have not been able to beat otherwise. And now that it is very low, my Ferrothorn is going to be able to come in and clean it up with Iron Head. So Buzzwool, even though I didn't get to use a single true specs hit, the fact that I didn't have the special moves available allowed me to take out both the Suicune and the Munchlax, which is amazing. The Archaeops is going to come in, goes for Heat Wave, knocks out my Ferrothorn, and at this point it's a speed tie. Um, he goes for the Heat Wave, does not knock me out, he was probably Scarfed or something like that, and Banded Thunder Punch from Gengar is going to be able to take out the Archaeops, and we are able to win that meme match. So MVP 1000% was the defensive rollout Salamence. I mean, that was... Like I said, that was one of the most satisfying, if not the most satisfying moments I have ever had in the draft format. Just seeing the Landorus switch in, put me at minus one, and then just drop in a single hit to a rollout. That was that was just amazing. But with this win, we do clinch the best record in the league, and our first playoff opponent will either be Narth or Mio, one of the two. Either way, I, I am confident in my matchup. I mean, those are still good players with good teams so it's going to be a difficult match uh guaranteed but i do i am confident in my matchups that i think i would be able to take them on so 
yeah, that was the game, guys, and the regular season. Thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And this is Sticks signing out. Why not? See you guys.